Salutations viewers across the world. This is Chico Squared, the medicine science guru. And this is a continuation, a part two of uh, uh, the June 2024 combined science paper. Uh, so uh, we have part one already uh, loaded on our channel. So just uh, be sure to like and subscribe. So this lesson is going to be bilingual for ease of comprehension. I'm going to be using the English language and I'm also going to be using the vernacular Shona. Right. So this question I'm going to be, sorry, in this, in this, in this uh, video, I'm going to be focusing specifically on uh, the chemistry section questions. Okay. So we are starting on question number 15. The diagram shows a method of separating dyes. The method of separation shown in the diagram is, and it, right, method of separation I took one of a screen. This one is known as chromatography. Okay. It's chromatography. No, you will separate as a dye or separate my colored substances right, using chromatography. However, we're going to be looking at other questions as well. Other answers filtration, no filtration, I eat filtration. They will separate a liquid and an insoluble solid. Okay, then distillation, they will separate my liquids and my different boiling points. Then um, evaporation, uh, I eat up a foot. Evaporation to separate a liquid from a solid, okay? Right. Then, which substance is a mixture? And then, which substance is a mixture? Oh, the A. Yes, of course, A is a mixture. A is a mixture of gases. A in my gases are siana siana. We've got nitrogen approximately 79%, oxygen approximately 20%, and then we have a carbon dioxide approximately 0.04%, and we also have another percentage water vapor, but water vapor is variable depending on humidity. Uh, how, how, how saturated is the air in terms of water vapor? And then we also have marae gases, food, the part and parcel of the air. We have an argon, helium, krypton, xenon, and a neon, my group zero elements, I periodic table. They are also a part of the mixture, the air mixture, okay? Then we have B, oxygen. No, oxygen is not a mixture. Oxygen is an element, and it O2. It's a diatomic molecule, right? Kuna oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, nema halogens, and a fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine. They are also diatomic molecule. Alpha mbari two two. Say angai wa. Aufuaga nyora oxygen iri ega ngodu O. Nyora O two. But it's not a mixture, and it. We're just discussing some some the part and parcel of this question. Magnesium. Magnesium is an element again. It's a group two element, a divalent cation. Uh, it's a it's an alkaline earth metal. Uh, it's not a mixture, okay? Then we have magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide is a compound, MgO, which is made up of Mg2 plus and O2 minus ions. Right, magnesium oxide is uh, a compound. It's not a mixture, okay? The question 17 reads, and one mole of hydrogen and one mole of sodium chloride have the same number of, and it, right? One mole, you know, it's more concept, and it? More concept, uh, a mole is an SI unit of amount of substance, okay? And there are some similarities with regards to one mole of a substance depending on what it is. One mole here, ethylene, diamine, tetraacetic acid, one mole here, one six gamma benzene, hexachloride, one mole here, any substance. Like, Final condensed with the same number of particles, six times 10 to the 23 uh, number of particles. All right, let's look at my questions at now. Neutrons, no. Electrons, no. Protons, no. Neutrons, electrons, protons, these are subatomic particles found in an atom. And it, Panaparukombewa, hydrogen, and sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is not an element, it's a compound. All right? So we can talk of these subatomic particles when we are discussing Studio Avogadro, the great Dutch chemist. Okay? So 17D is the answer on that one. Question 18. An organic compound contains... 84% carbon, 16% hydrogen. Uh, what is the empirical formula? Right, can you work empirical formula a substance? First, ultrama percentages are repo, and mass is a repo of what divider by the relative atomic mass, okay, for each and every. So, panabatine sheet in carbon, in hydrogen. Right, the MR for carbon, the AR for carbon is 12. So, chaturachi 84% or divided by 12. Then, ultra hydrogen, 16% or divided by 1. Then answer on Wawana, Pane answer is zero two. You take the smallest number, opens a messy, and then you get the answer. Ipapo. Right, 19. 
Which process is used to manufacture ammonium nitrate? Ammonia is a base. Nitric acid is an acid. So an acid-base reaction is known as neutralization. So we use neutralization in manufacturing ammonium nitrate from ammonia and nitric acid. However, I'm going to tell some more questions. Reduction, no. Reduction is the removal of, uh, removal of uh, oxygen or the addition of hydrogen or the gain of electrons. And it has nothing to do with manufacture of ammonium nitrate. Distillation, no. Electrolysis, no. Electrolysis is a process of breaking down a compound using electricity. And among uh, weak acids, ethanoic acid, acetic acid, uh, popular known as vinegar. Uh, vinegar is a carboxylic acid, CH3, C double O, H. Uh, yeah, it falls under the homologous series for carboxylic acids in organic chemistry. And um, right, these are weak acids that are consumable by human beings. Right. And this question is talking about litmus paper. Right? Litmus paper is one of uh, the ways that we can use as a diagnostic test to test whether a substance is acidic or alkaline. And uh, can I trip a litmus paper? My litmus paper is blue. I don't want to test the acidity. Can I change it red? And then my litmus paper is red. I don't want to test the alkalinity. Can I change it blue? So, I don't want to test the lemon juice. So I'm meaning to say blue litmus paper remains, blue litmus paper tends to red whenever you immerse it in weak acid. And then red litmus paper remains red, can watch it acid. So the answer that we have, pana blue litmus paper, it, it, it turns red. And then pa red litmus paper, it remains red. Okay, so this is the answer that we have on this particular question. Let's move on to question 21. Right. The diagram shows a reaction between dilute hydrochloric acid with substance X to produce a magnesium salt. And it, what is substance X? And it, paruta ronyayagunze, hydrochloric acid in X to produce magnesium salt. And it, okay. Normally, karaparuta uh, hydrochloric acid, palap, tuto zadi salt iru gaziru hapa, in magnesium chloride. And it, and the magnesium chloride salt, Chokonakiwana by reacting magnesium with hydrochloric acid. We get magnesium chloride plus hydrogen gas. This is a metal and an acid reacting. Or you can take uh, something like magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide, you react it with hydrochloric acid. You are going to get magnesium chloride plus water. Because magnesium chloride is basic and then uh, hydrochloric acid is an acid. So this is uh, a neutralization, a typical neutralization reaction of uh, uh, magnesium oxide being a base reacting with hydrochloric acid being an acid to produce magnesium chloride plus hydrogen gas. So substance X in as far as this question is concerned. Let's look at my answers at now. Right, we have magnesium, right? We have magnesium oxide, all right? Then we have magnesium chloride and then we have magnesium hydroxide, and it? All right. The most appropriate answer to this question, and it? It would add the reaction in dilute hydrochloric acid in the substance X to produce a magnesium salt. The most appropriate answer that we have here is magnesium. Okay. Because we got to add hydrogen gas. Of course, magnesium oxide, magnesium hydroxide, is going to But as you put it, magnesium, put it hydrogen gas as a product. Okay. So magnesium, though, the most approach umom. So magnesium is our answer on question 21. Let's look at question 22. The flow diagram shows the stages involved in the separation of gases in air. And it, right, in the right, process of separating my gases, right, I'm about liquefaction of air, liquefaction and fractional distillation. All right. So my gases are not compressed and they are cooled, and it, and then they are separated by fractional distillation. Normally, this process is to extract nitrogen. Nitrogen is in the harbor process because nitrogen reacting with hydrogen produces what? Uh, ammonia in a reversible exothermic reaction. Which gas is cooled as a liquid at a temperature minus 183 degrees Celsius by the fractional right, distillation? Right. Normally, gas is not collected at minus 183 degrees Celsius in nitrogen gas. All right. Nitrogen, you know, boil at minus 183 degrees, somewhere there. And it, 
minus 183, minus 186 degrees Celsius. So at that temperature, nitrogen vaporizes, all right? And you end up fractionating column. So nitrogen, no gas, ratu dilanaro, per that temperature, and it, okay. 23. The diagram shows the production of sulfur trioxide. This is a reaction, you know, manufacture, you know, the contact process, the manufacture of sulfuric acid. So we have sulfur trioxide and oxygen in a reversible reaction to produce sulfur trioxide. So the sulfur dioxide and oxygen in a reversible reaction to produce sulfur trioxide. So the equation shows that the production of sulfur trioxide is, if you check pana delta H negative, minus 98 kilojoules per mole, and it? Ogatungwana pana minus, ku chemical energetics, a negative represents an exothermic reaction. This is an exothermic reaction, and an exothermic reaction is a reaction whereby heat is produced to the surroundings. Endothermic heat is absorbed from the surroundings. Endothermic, it's there to break my bones. And then exothermic uh, door energy released when bones are being formed. Okay, so this is an exothermic process. All right. Papa, the displacement process, reduction process, uh, no. Right, displacement process, it's one of my examples. And if you check the previous question, patatara reaction between magnesium and hydrochloric acid, this is one of the displacement reactions. Because magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen. So I don't know displace hydrogen. No, no, this hydrogen, you put it wipe up. Hydrogen, you say, All right, we're going to have a video whereby we're going to talk about the reactivity of metals vis a vis. Uh, the displacement reaction processes that occur. Right, question 24. Diagram shows an experimental setup to investigate conditions necessary for rusting. Which test tube A, B, C, or D will have a rusty nail? Right, rusting, ra rusty iron 3 oxide. And so if you take iron, uh, your reactor name Vura, name oxygen, it produces iron 3 oxide. So apparently my conditions are necessary for rusting. So I'm going to say my test tubes here, so I do not satisfy all the conditions that are required for rusting process to occur, right? Mm -hmm. Then about the boiled water and the nail, then an oil layer, right? Then about the one, is it magnesium ribbon? Let's analyze. Let's analyze D, right? Let's analyze D, let's moisture, let's analyze it. And then number two, Panning one metal, we are surround the iron nail, and this is sort of like a sacrificial process. You could chow your zona, iron, chino your zona, metal, we are getting the reds, and one of uh, the ways, you know, the galvanizing, you know, when it's a zinc in place of iron, so that my corrosion agents, pano, we are, I don't know, but zinc, but iron nail. All right, so D, upon a rusting in a tiger, then a C. Upon a rusting in a tiger, because pan a layer oil, pam sorrow. Layer oil, pam sorrow, and a prevent the oxygen would disappear in dam katum. And the oxygen, ya ya is a pin dim katum, sugar out upon a rusting in a tiger. Plus, remember, I'm fray a boilis, so I grow a never boilis, so can a mamma name a dissolved oxygen in a fray momo in a better vaporize. Can I have a vaporize to that? The water itself does not contain dissolved oxygen. And as if it is not enough, there's an oil layer to prevent oxygen from entering. So oxygen is one of the requirements for rusting to okay. So uh, on that basis, uh, C it doesn't uh, qualify for, for the rusting process. Anhydrous calcium chloride. Apana, apana. A in do hands up. And it's 25. Which metal is used to galvanize iron? La galvanizing ye iron in a tika kana iron ka coat one is zinc and it remember and we understand a sacrificial coating and it ye iron ne zinc could throw the macorosian agents and fana wona zinc a one iron pap. So the answer we have here is zinc for question 25 and it's B. Question 26. Diagram shows the preparation of ethanol. Substance Z is what? And it's yeast. And it remember fermentation is an anaerobic respiration process. You don't know that's the ethanol and anaerobic respiration is respiration which occurs in the absence of oxygen. 
So anaerobic respiration in plants yeah, produces yeah. ethanol, tetra glucose solution in the presence of yeast, and the yeast con contains enzymes, cymes, and it, right? And then this produces uh, uh, ethanol and carbon dioxide. Then anaerobic respiration in animals, let's say a, a person has undergone vigorous activity, yeah, as now jairaquita, then the biological oxygen demand, you want them, human body, my cells will share oxygen, or anaerobic respiration. Can I my animals pan produce the lactate got lactic acid? Okay? Lactic acid, no, you know, you can accumulate my muscles, you no, know, because muscle fatigue and a cramp. All right. So substance is that we have a glucose solution. Ne yeast. Put anaerobic respiration. Po gazirwa ethanol and tunes one an pap. Okay. So glucose solution is the answer. Let's look at question. 27, which happens to be our last question on this video. To which homologous series do methane, ethane, propane belong? Right, a homologous series in organic chemistry, we are talking about a family of organic compounds with similar chemical properties, with similar functional groups. Right, to name a homologous series, I can say, and I say, and I name alkin, to name alkin, to name alcohols, to name carboxylic acids, to name halogen alkins, to name esters, to name arenes, and it to name alkynes. Right, we've got uh, various aldehydes, my ketones, we've got various uh, homologous series, but for our ordinary level syllabus, chemistry, pure chemistry, and it. My homologous series are taught to now, taught to alkin, ne alkin, ne alcohol, ne carboxylic acid. Then my esters to my taura in passing. And then, then for combined science, we only deal with my alkins, ne my alkins. Okay, ne yeah, some part of alcohols, but not in more detail. So homologous series, then I methane, ethane, propane. I answer my alkins. My alkanes are my saturated hydrocarbons and then my single bonds between the carbon carbon and the carbon hydrogen. To name my alkanes, my alkanes are my double bonds, carbon carbon double bonds. They are known as uh, unsaturated hydrocarbons. On the basis here, we can actually add other substances. And the observations we are going to see when we add bromine to an unsaturated hydrocarbon bromine water is going to decolorize. This is one of the diagnostic tests that are used to uh, find out the presence of, uh, the presence of uh, a double bond in a compound. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, I hope you have been enlightened and I hope uh, you have uh, received the light that we are trying to impart within the crevices of your cerebral hemisphere and it is my hope and belief that you are going to do well, you are going to excel uh, in your academic endeavors, regardless of which examination board you are part and parcel of. Uh, it is my hope and belief that all is going to be well with you in Jesus Christ's name. This is Chico Squared, your host, uh, in collaboration with Former Media Educational TV. Be blessed and stay blessed. I salute you. Chakwenda Chibaba.